What's up? Welcome into Dallas Mavericks today by Chat Sports. I am Harrison Graham. We got some rumors to hit you guys with as the offseason is well underway. Appreciate Tom Downey for filling in while I was out, was on paternity leave. Baby's doing great, mom's doing great. All that is squared away. Uh, but I am back. Uh, and speaking of being back, spread the word, share this video on Twitter. All you got to do is follow these steps. You click that share button right below the video here, select Twitter, then you click post to Twitter. And before you actually see Send out the tweet. Go ahead and tag me in the tweet at HGramNFL. Everyone that does that will get a retweet from me. So tag me on social media. Spread the word here on Dallas Mavericks today. All right. Obviously, the Dallas Mavericks got fined $750,000 for tanking uh, the final couple of games, especially that Bulls game to secure that top 10 pick. But Kevin O'Connor of The Ringer says that the Mavs wanted to tank starting back in March. Did that happen? And it doesn't appear so. Apparently, Luca and Kyrie pushed back on that idea. Here's what O'Connor had to say. Quotes, my sources say that in late March, Dallas coaches met with players to discuss a plan for Markeith Morris and JaVale McGee to get heavier minutes. That is when the tanking was supposed to begin. But Luca and especially Kyrie were agitated that the team was waving the white flag and both refused to sit. Something feels off here uh, with this whole situation. I mean, obviously you traded for Kyrie Irving to try and spark this thing. Now, I think that was obviously a long-term play as well, but you don't trade for Kyrie Irving and then mail it in a month later. I don't think that really adds up. Um, you know, I will say this. I, in my head, probably starting in late March, was thinking tanking might be the move. Top 10 pick could be in play. Did the org actually do that? I'm not sure. Were some kind of preliminary discussions just hypotheticals discuss. I think that's possible, but I'm not sure there was some like super formal organized team meeting uh, to discuss whether or not to tank between players and coaches. Uh, they were in the playoff race in a wide open Western Conference uh, up until about, you know, five or six games left. Even I was wanting them to get in. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously there became a clear point where this team was not going to make a move, hence why they tried to shut it down the last couple of games. Uh, here's my take. If they actually started tanking, like with, I don't know, was that six, eight games left, ten games left? It's kind of a mess, man. Like, you trade for Kyrie Irving, a top 20 player in this league. Like, you're trying to make a run. You're at least thinking that could be possible. And uh, obviously, like, things didn't gel perfectly after that happened. He got hurt. Luka was hurt, et cetera. Uh, but that's that's not a great place to be as a franchise. But hopefully you get back Kyrie Irving uh, long term uh, after this season uh, and you start retooling this roster because there's no doubt uh, that that needs to take place. And the number 10 pick, if the Mavs keep that, can help you do just that. Now, should the Mavs have taken earlier, gotten up to that number nine, number eight slot perhaps. Type Y for yes, type in for no. Um, I think the fact they got into the top ten is fine. Uh, the best they probably could have done was nine uh, with Utah finishing, I believe, two games behind uh, Dallas in the tank order standings, but uh, uh, I don't think, you know, Luka and Kyrie and based on this report, uh, would have been a fan of that. So I think the way they handled it was uh, perfectly fine. Okay, let's talk about the draft here, some latest draft buzz. Uh, are the Mavs going to keep that pick? Uh, number one, uh, because a team from 11 to 14 could jump them in the lottery, and uh, that would be very on par for this franchise. Uh, but if they do keep the selection, will they make a pick or will they use it as a trade ship? Here's Callie Kaplan of the Dallas Morning News. She says that if their first rounder remains in the top 10 after the lottery, Dallas executives will likely look to package the selection in a trade to help revamp the roster and supporting cast around Doncic and Irving. Now, this is the best way to help you right now, right? Like if you're trying to contend next year, then using that pick to acquire a you know, not necessarily a third star, but another big-time player next to Luka and Kyrie, assuming bringing back Kyrie is in the plans, which I absolutely think it is. Uh, but that is uh, that helps you uh, sooner rather than later. Now, obviously, I do think there's appeal to drafting someone. I think you look at a lot of the great teams in this league, it's homegrown talent, right? I mean, uh, look at the box with uh, Giannis and uh, uh, Chris Middleton uh, being uh, key draft picks there. Obviously, the Warriors are a great example. Uh, the Mavs haven't valued the draft a ton throughout their history, but 
Think about how they got to the conference finals last year with Luka Doncic and Jalen Brunson, two players they drafted in the same year. So I think drafting a player does have value. But if you're trying to contend and contend right away, which obviously you're probably going to want to do that while Luka's here, uh, then you know using that pick to trade for someone uh, like a Paul George who could be available. He's going to be 33. He's got some injuries. You may not have to trade as much as you would think to get a player like him at this point in his career. OG Ananobi, who's been connected to trade buzz over the last couple of seasons. Chris Middleton's an interesting one. He, he's had some injury problems, but had a huge uh, game one in their, their playoff series. Lowry Markinen, if Utah would be willing to move on. Kawhi Leonard, that's kind of the pipe dream scenario, but uh, we'll throw him in there as well. He's always mixed in rumors. Uh, also, obviously, if players of this caliber are available, then I think trading that pick does make sense. Uh, I would just say let's not close the door on making a selection because I think the Mavs have just ignored the draft too much uh, historically, but I get uh, kind of where they're at with things. If you're uh, trying to contend right away with Luka and bringing back Kyrie, it probably makes more sense to use that pick in a trade uh, to land a win-now piece, uh, but I would not be opposed to drafting a 3-and-D you know, type of player, try and groom that guy uh, within this roster as well. Now, should the Mavs trade or keep the pick if they end up getting it, which, again, their luck, they probably won't. Type T for trade or K for keep. Let us know in the comments below. All right, folks, make sure you subscribe. Our offseason coverage is just just getting started. Don't miss a thing here on Dallas Mavericks today. Myself, producer Coop, will have you covered with several videos per week. So hit that sub button. Trying to get to 22,000 subs ASAP. Let's get there uh, before draft and free agency get here later on this summer. All right. Uh, is Mark Cuban pleased with general manager Nico Harrison, who's been on the job for a couple of years now? Uh, Harrison's second season uh, is obviously in the book since coming over from Nike. And, you know, it was definitely an innovative hire at the time. I think so far, very much a mixed bag, right? Like, I don't think the free agency slash offseason plan last year went well at all. Obviously, the Brunson debacle, which there's probably blame to go around on multiple fronts there. I don't think that's purely a Nico problem, but uh, how does Cuban uh, feel about him? It's hard to say for sure. Here's Nico after the season. He says, I don't think offense is the problem. I've always said this. It's our defensive end. I think anybody can score on us, whoever it is, anybody can score on us. It's definitely true, and hey, you're in charge of the roster, man. Like, uh, that's why losing Brunson was so big because, yeah, you got Kyrie, but you had to trade Dorian Finney-Smith, your best perimeter defender, to go get him. Uh, and I, I said this at the time, and I'll say it now. Would you rather have Jalen Brunson, uh, Dorian Finney-Smith, and Spencer Dinwiddie, or just Kyrie? I think I would take the three guys. So that was definitely botched. Uh, there's no doubt uh, about that. Uh, Cuban is blaming the take foul on the defensive struggles. Dude, you just don't have good defenders, man. Like, anybody can see that. Like, Luka and Kyrie, we know they're going to struggle uh, in a backcourt defensively uh, at times. So you got to give perimeter defenders around them. And just Reggie Bullock and Josh Green, who are kind of undersized as it is, they're not going to guard big wings that well. Uh, that's just not going to get it done at the end of the day. Uh, <laughs> And then JaVale McGee, I mean, what a disaster that has been. Oh, he'll he'll protect the rim. He'll start for us. Remember when they promised JaVale a starting role? Well, that lasted about 20 minutes uh, because they realized he couldn't play at all. Uh, so that was not an answer. And it really just goes back to year after year after year after year, regardless if it's Nico, Donnie, Cuban being involved. This team is just not executed in free agency. They just haven't. I mean, that's the bottom line. And if they don't do it soon, you're going to lose Luka. I mean, that's that's what this thing's going to come down to. So you got a lot of things you need. You need rim, rim protection. You need wing defensive help, rebounding. I do like the idea of Paul George. I know he's a little older and has some injuries now. But, like, I think you could get him potentially at a reasonable trade and he is a great fit. Like, him as a number three next to Luka and Kyrie would be fantastic. Like, you get him in here, uh, I would be a fan of that. And then you try to find a way to get better down low. Obviously, Paul George's contract would eat up a lot of your cap. But, you know, find some uh, cheap big defenders. I mean, that's that's really what you would need at that point in time. So, great, Nico, so far. Two years in, A, B, C, D, or F. I'll give it, like, right down the middle, C, uh, you know, C minus. I, I don't love uh, what's taking place here. I'll, you know, I, I like the aggression. You, you know, I didn't love the Kyrie trade specifically, but I like being willing to go make a move like that and, uh, you know, not listening to the detractors of that move. So I'll give him a C, C minus, uh, a lot of room to grow. We'll see how it goes in the near future. All right, guys, we're signing off here on the channel. If you love the Mavs, type MFFL in the comments. 
Coop and I will be back soon. Go Mavs, and uh, hopefully things get turned around very, very quickly.